Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video, which is about Alfred Zero's handling of the classical English. We've got a series of videos that show Alpha Zero's handling as white and black. And in this game, Alpha Zero is going to be on the white side. Uh, in a typical classical English position, then the center gets closed and the four knights got exchanged and Alpha Zero plays on both wings and actually generates pass pawns in on the queen side, the king side, and also in the center. So three monstrous pass pawns and even Stockfish is not able to hold them back. Ah, that's right. It's a really nice game. Also shows uh, Alpha Zero uh, avoiding castling as well. So, uh... Okay, let's take a look at this wonderful game. Um, so Alpha Zero started with one C4, and that was the only move specified uh, from the opening book. So uh, from now on, both sides are on their own. Alpha Zero is white and Stockfish is black. E5, uh, which uh, actually both machines uh, preferred as their answer against uh, one C4. G3, uh, and this is the favourite move order of Mihai Marin, a Romanian grandmaster who wrote, uh, I, I guess, the classic work on the uh, on the English opening. Knight f6, bishop g2, knight c6, knight c3, bishop b4, and this is the the main line of the classical English. Um, so Black, after staking a claim um, uh, to the center with one e5, Black's just developed the knights. And um, now with bishop b4, he's fighting for uh, for d5 with the pieces, sort of trying to, to wrest that control of that d5 square away from white. Because white until now has been yeah pretty consistent in uh, attacking d5. Pawn on c4, knight on c3 and bishop on g2. So alpha zero doesn't allow uh, stockfish to double its c pawns. That that is also possible. And it plays knight d5. Uh, stockfish replied with castles. Um, probably stockfish's favourite move in this position. It's the third most popular move, but very very reasonable. Uh, you know, some very good players have uh, have played it as well. And uh, here alpha zero plays an unusual line. Um, I think most common at grandmaster level recently has been uh, six e3. Uh, this move. But um, Alpha Zero plays a3, and uh, yeah, leads to a very interesting uh, plan actually. Bishop c5, b4. Bishop d4, the bishop just sidesteps there. Um, rook b1 and a6. So Black's just in time to uh, to save that um, that dark square bishop from getting trapped. And you know, after sort sort of uh, going to b4, first of all, it's now found a, a very typical post on the a7 g1 diagonal. Here, Alpha Zero plays what's an over-the-board novelty. It's Knight F3. It's a very natural-looking move, and it has been played before in correspondence chess by the Japanese player Otaki. Yeah, and uh, we actually followed that game for for a little while. Actually, uh, you'll see that Otaki found uh, well a very nice concept that uh, that Alpha Zero also plays. So the game continued: Bishop A7, D3. And uh, now, very typical for this line, I mean, Black's forced the knight to d5, um, occupy the outpost, and now forces white to occupy that outpost with a pawn, which um, pluses and minuses, white gains space, but um, the scope of his bishop on g2 is restricted. Knight d5 takes knight d4, very typical way of doing things. Um, knight takes c5 will be met by rook e8, which is not really uh, at all what white wants. So white takes on d4. And here it's a very critical decision for Black. Black has the choice of taking back with the bishop maintaining its pawn structure or taking back with the e-pawn. And the advantage of that is that it makes the pawn on e2 a little bit weak. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very crucial decision, but this is very typical, especially when white's played uh, d3. This um, bishop on a7, pawn on d4, they bear down on the pawn on e3, and, well, black can uh, line up on the on the half-open e-file, try and attack e2. And that's sort of compensation for the fact that, well, you know, white's got its own target um, on c7, along the half-open c-file. But now, I think from now on, I have to say, alpha zero's play is phenomenal. 
And uh, um, I have actually, you know, I've, I've looked at p these types of positions before, and I always felt that um, with the knight's exchange, the positions were a little flat in actual fact. Amazing how much not having knights, you know, sort of uh, affects the dynamism of the position. But um, well, what Alpha Zero manages to do in uh, with uh, with all this is uh, is amazing. You won't be surprised by Alpha Zero's first move here. No, you might be able to guess it if you've been uh, avid watchers of uh, this channel, avid readers of uh, of Game Changer. H4, in we go. So gaining space on the king's side and uh, pushing the pawn, which is protected by its rook, uh, so it can march straight up the board. The centre's closed, so white's able to do this. Yeah, I mean, Alpha Zero's just fantastic in these closed centre positions, um, or block centre positions. And um, yeah, what you've got to do, you've got to create uh, play on uh, on the wings. And uh, well, have a look at what Alpha Zero does. H5. And um, the correspondence game actually went bishop d7 here. And um, um, white, um, well, the idea for white in that game uh, wasn't to play h6. It played, uh, the, the white player played rook h4 and ended up uh, trying to uh, attack this pawn on d4. Again, it's a, it's another point to h4, h5, and very interesting, but um, I do like what Alpha Zero did. Um, and that was after bishop g4, it played this move h6. So this um, allows white to weaken black stark squares with black stark square bishop um, off right at the other side of the board. Yeah, it's a very nice, um, uh, it's a very nice, uh, you know, positional idea simply. Black dark squared bishop off the, off uh, at the other side of the board, so weaken the dark squares on the king side. G6, and now this move. So white decides it's not going to castle at all. Exactly. More no castling chess from the normal alpha zero. So uh, excellent stuff. Um, yeah, it's got a plan. Uh, alpha zero has got um, a, a pretty deep plan about how it's going to develop its uh, pieces, and it wants its rook on the h file for that. Um, now Stockfish played uh, this move, um, f6, which is um, kind of a mannerism with Stockfish, I think. Um, um, I'll, I'll just flash up the position from one of our earlier videos. Um, I think that, that was one we called G&H Pawn Mayhem in the Grunfeld, where um, a Stockfish does something very similar. When it's um, lacking um, um, a bishop and it's got weakened uh, colour complex, it likes to uh, to move its pawns onto square of that colour. So this pawn, these pawns are going to move to f6 and g5 just to take control of some dark squares. And um, well, here Alpha Zero plays a, a pretty typical move, plays bishop f3. Uh, Alpha Zero would like to exchange off that white squared bishop um, because that's black's most active piece here. Yeah, I mean, um, typical Alpha Zero thing, swap off the opponent's active pieces, leave uh, black with passive pieces. And of course, uh, now that black's played f6, it's quite tempting to swap off the light squared bishops because after a move like bishop f3, ef3, then um, the e6 square would be a nice uh, tempting target for a white rook. So Stockfish didn't do that, played bishop d7. And now Alpha Zero uh, just shows this brilliant strategy. So um, it plays um, um, another rook's pawn, this move a4. And with this move, white wants to stop black's bishop that's on a7 now from becoming active. Because if white gets to a5 with the pawn, the bishop can't go to b6, which would be a better square for it because it could defend its c-pawn from there. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a typical plan for black that you see in many positions, um, where black plays uh, the move bishop b6, and then plays a5 and a takes b4. And after a takes b4, that bishop on b6 is invulnerable, um, because um, uh, it um, uh, can't be attacked by a pawn, and it's protecting the pawn on c7, and also you know supporting the pawn on d4. So what alpha zero does, and it's something that it does in, I've seen it a number of times now, gets a pawn to a5, and then that bishop is not going to be able to get to b6, which means that the c7 pawn is always vulnerable. I mean, we've had play on the king's side, now we've got play on the queen's side, gaining space on the other side of the board. So Stockfish tries to do its own space gaining, uh, this time on the king's side. Pawn on g5, stops the rook coming to h4, stops the bishop coming to f4. a5, very nice. Rook c8, just decent move, protecting the pawn on c7. Bishop d2, you know, both sides are just completing their development, rook e8. Yeah, now, uh, you know, I mean, alpha zero's got to, um, uh, got to find something to do. I mean, uh, again, I've been, you know, very 
complimentary about its play, very nice strategy, but um, yeah, it's not clear what uh, what Alpha Zero is doing. And the space to manoeuvre is quite restricted, but uh, what Alpha Zero comes up with here is uh, quite, a, yeah, quite amazing. I mean, it hadn't occurred to me at all. So this move, Bishop H5 is the start. Rook E7, F4. Okay, fine. I mean, we're um, we're trying to open up some lines on the uh, on the king side, but I mean, can't Black just play this move G4, keep everything closed, and and how how is White going to proceed now? I mean, White doesn't even have the E3 break anymore because uh, it doesn't uh, the E pawn doesn't have the support of the F pawn. But now F5. Oh, what a move. Really great move. And it really reminded me, I'll flash up the diagram as well, of one of the most fantastic Alpha Zero ideas um, in uh, uh, that it discovered. And that was in the Grunfeld as Black, where it plays a similar pawn sacrifice to um, um, to expand the um, uh, expand the, the scope of its uh, of its uh, um, of its bishop, its queen's bishop. And here, this is the same idea, just f5, giving away a pawn and just making sure that this bishop is active. And of course, well, the g pawn has moved, so this, yeah, you know, little square on g5 is uh, is sort of uh, becoming more and more tempting. So bishop takes f5 and now another gorgeous move. King g1, more no castling chess. Mm -hmm. So this allows white to have the f1 square for its queen. Exactly. So, I mean, it's uh, incredible, right? This queen is um, is uh, going to come to f1. And now all of a sudden we've got rid of the pawn and the f file is a big attacking channel for for uh, for white. Um, so queen d7, queen f1. That bishop is uh, pretty much uh, pinned for, the net for now on uh, onto f5 because uh, f6 is weak. So Stockfish defends it. Now the bishop can move away. Only it can't because this rook comes to h4 now attacking the pawn on g4. I mean, just, it's really incredible. I mean, you know, the black pieces, you, you start to think, yeah, you know, where can they move actually? What squares have they got? It's very difficult to say. So king h8, getting out of a possible rook coming onto the g file. This very nice move, rook c1, attention to all the details, uh, you'd say if it, you know, if it was a, a human player. That so it's putting pressure on the c7 pawn. Exactly, that rook was, was not doing that much on b1, just get the rook on, on c1. And um, yeah, I mean, here um, Stockfish decides that um, it's got to do something uh, um, just to try and get a little bit more space for its pieces. Actually try and get that bishop on a7 in the game because it's really doing nothing. So it plays b6, which is um, it's going to take on a5 and maybe get the bishop onto c5, which is fine. But that's also creating extra weaknesses on the queen side. And uh, well, actually, bizarrely enough, Alpha Zero has got to play for a, a, a plan for exploiting that. But first of all, um, Alpha Zero's got uh, got some business on the uh, on the king side. It plays this great pawn sacrifice, Queen F4. So Rook take uh, B takes A5 first, rather. Rook takes E2. Has Alpha Zero missed something? Alpha Zero has the lovely move here. Rook takes G4. Ah, fantastic! This one. Oh, the uh, the, the idea is that um, if Bishop takes G4, we've got Bishop G4, Queen E7. Bishop takes c2, queen takes c2. I mean, all these exchanges, we're just exchanging off all of black's active pieces. Um, the only thing that's vaguely active is the queen, but um, after this one, we've got um, a very typical uh, um, exploitation of this beautiful pawn on h6, restricting the king on h8. Uh, something uh, that actually, I mean, Ding Liren played a game against Rajabov where he commented, oh yeah, quite a similar position, where he commented, yeah, this pawn on h6, uh, I knew it from Alpha Zero games. Uh, you know, it restricts the king on h8, mm -hmm. and here we've got a gorgeous little finish. Queen f6. Queen f6. That's the one. We don't miss those anymore. Rook e8 check and mate. So, um, I mean, that's the danger that uh, that uh, that Stockfish is in. So, of course, Stockfish doesn't fall for that. It took another pawn. Bishop takes d3. Rook g7. Rook e7. Takes takes. Rook e1. Queen d8. And yeah, I mean, Stockfish has gained, uh, you know, uh, pawn on e2, pawn on d3. Uh, Alpha Zero took the pawn on g4, so Alpha Zero is just two pawns down. But look at the net effect of it all. Um, just uh, um, White's got a rook on the e file. That e file has been opened, an, an attacking channel has been opened. And look at the black rook on f8. Its active rook has disappeared. Well, um, Alpha Zero continues to put on the pressure. 
this little uh, shimmy to the right and then back, just uh, attacking the bishop now, and the f6 pawn has been undefended a bit more. Bishop b5, king g2. Getting off the line of the diagonal of the bishop. Yeah, just very typical alpha zero. When it's attacking, it always takes a moment just to consolidate its king side. Bishop d7, and now this gorgeous move again. Um, really, again, showing vision over the whole board. Um, Black's desperately tried to free its uh, dark squared bishop. It played b6, takes a5. But now Alpha Zero has spotted that that has unprotected the a6 pawn. And now look at that fast a pawn. That's, Black's going to have to keep an eye on that. Exactly. I mean, Alpha Zero has moved this a pawn all the way up to a5. And now, well, it's a very dangerous pass pawn now. So Alpha Zero comes back. Not very easy for uh, Stockfish to find something to do. It uh, tries to get his bishop active. But now you might notice something after bishop takes g6, h takes g6. Two pass pawns. Indeed. Two, two rooks. rooks pawns. Indeed. Uh, I mean, uh, this is going to stretch black, you can imagine, uh, with uh, pass pawns on completely opposite sides of the board. Uh, queen e6, queen c8, rook f1. Well, Stockfish can't allow the queen to uh, stay there, so queen takes c6. But now... Three pass pawns. Three pass pawns. And you are not going to be able to... Uh, uh, to stop all that. I mean, um, so Stockfish starts trying to, um, actually gives away um, a couple of pawns, or rather gives away a pawn like this. It's trying to connect its bishop with the rest of the position. So, you know, to try and stop e7. But after he, uh, after rook f3, actually uh, Stockfish um, resigned in this position. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the main variation is something, for example, like king h7, we go a6. Rook a8, we just go e7. Um, you're not going to be able to uh, to stop all those pawns. And uh, I think the main line that uh, that uh, Stockfish gave was takes, takes, king h6. Important move, g5 check, saving that pawn. And after king g7, rook a3. White's just going to pick up all the pawns and win very easily. So that was the, um, that was the game. I'll just, uh, as always, just... Uh, Maybe show a, a couple of, uh, of of highlights uh, for me. Uh, obviously, this March of the Rooks pawn. I mean, we, we've become so accustomed to it, but I mean, it really is fantastic strategy. And then this little no castling move, King F1, and um, and I think what I mean this beautiful idea of uh, cramping black on the queen side as well, and then this astounding idea F4, F5, King G1, and the pieces come in through the F file and the G file. And then later on, um, when black takes the E file, white uses that as well to invade into black's position. Really fantastic strategy. Uh, I was really uh, so impressed by that. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed the game as much as, uh, as, much as we did. I mean, uh, we've got loads more coming on the English, actually. We've got a um, fantastic set of games. So uh, keep out, keep watching for that. Do subscribe to our channel. Um, do buy Game Changer if you haven't. Uh, for German viewers, we've got um, a German edition, Seitenwende in Schach. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which um, is a beautiful hardback edition. Um, and, uh, well, whatever, please do keep in touch and keep on watching our videos. We've got lots more planned, lots of great AlphaZero Stockfish games. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for watching.